For weeks now, the nonstop topic of conversation has been the coronavirus. But do you know that there's an even more pervasive, more deadly virus that has infected the entire population of this world? That virus is sin. Sin, that is rebellion, separation from God's plan, has infected every one of us, and the result of that sin is death. That's Romans 6.23. But there's a vaccine, a gift from God that leads to eternal life, and that gift is Jesus Christ. This remedy is listed in the second half of Romans 6, verse 23. So how do we get a hold of this remedy? How do we receive the gift that counters the sin pandemic from which we all suffer? The key is found in the, in an ancient scripture from Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 13 through 16. According to that passage, when God allows a plague among his people, the prescription is as follows. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. While sickness and evil are not of God's making, he does sometimes use those conditions to turn the hearts of his people back to him. In those times, recovery begins with confession and repentance, that is, seeking God's forgiveness. As Christians, you and I are people called by his name, by the name of Christ. We are summoned to humbly acknowledge the sins in our land and to turn our face toward God and his plan for our lives. When we confess our sins openly and earnestly turn back to God, he promises forgiveness and he promises healing. Jesus forgives. He covered our sins. The cure for the sin virus is available to all who repent, all who accept Jesus' sacrifice and turn their ways back to him. Scripture promises if you just declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. That's Romans 10, 9. King Solomon counseled that God's mercy follows those who openly confess and renounce their sin. That's Proverbs 28, verse 13. Often we think of forgiveness on a personal level. Jesus did die for our sins. That's John 3, 16. We ask for personal forgiveness. We forgive one another. That's Matthew 6, uh, 12. Uh, Forgiveness is available over and over, Matthew 18, 22. But forgiveness also has a corporate aspect to it. God instructed Moses about the standards for nations. A nation following godly principles would be blessed, and a nation that drifts away from God would suffer curses. That, of course, is Deuteronomy 28. God also instructed that when a nation returned to God after having strayed and repented, then the Lord will restore the nation's fortunes. That's Deuteronomy 30, verse 3. History notes that when George Washington took the oath of office as President of the United States of America, he opened his Bible first to Deuteronomy 28. Then he placed his hand on the Bible for the administration of the oath of office. By doing so, Washington was claiming God's promises of national blessings as this country worked to follow God's mandates. That same scripture promised curses should the nation abandon God's ways. Early in the history of this nation, biblical principles undergirded government and laws. Congress used tax dollars, for example, to print Bibles for for use in public schools as readers. Prayer began every school day and every government meeting was opened in prayer. Religion was respected and human life was recognized as something that was in the image of God. To be sure, our nation had its downfalls, but overall the direction was to recognize and respect God's role in the life of the nation. During those early years, our nation, in fact, was blessed. 
Our borders were secure. Our food sources were bountiful. Our military succeeded against despots and tyrants around the world. The fledgling nation of the United States of America was, in, was indeed blessed. As time passed, however, God was eliminated from the public schools, eliminated from government meetings, eliminated from social functions. Even symbols like the cross or the Ten Commandments came under attack. Human life was no longer respected. Baby killing was not only tolerated, but was given constitutional protection, resulting in the killing of more than 60 million unborn infants offered as uh, as a sacrifice to the false god of reproductive rights. And here we are today. The World Trade Centers are gone. Our borders have become porous. A worldwide pandemic is killing people, destroying businesses, disrupting trade, and exacerbating the natural disasters such as hurricanes, earthquakes, wildfires, and global warming, all of which are prevalent at levels never before known to mankind. Does this sound like a time when we as a nation, as a congregation, as a Christian people need to humble ourselves and pray, turn our face to God, acknowledging our corporate wrongdoing, and correct the course for our nation, for our church, or for our community of faith? You bet. Now is the time for that repentance and turning this course back to God. plagues that op oppress us today just might be God's way of turning this wayward nation back to him. Now more than ever, we need to remember that Jesus forgives. When we humble ourselves and pray, confessing our sins of, of our nation, turning our direction back to God, Jesus, the Jesus who died in payment of our sins, will hear our pleas, forgive our sins, and heal our land. Jesus is the great healer. We as a nation need his healing. Scripture provides the formula, so reflect with me, if you will, on these questions for introspection. Question number one, we are in a time of national malaise. Symptoms are seen in the health pandemic, the growing natural disasters, the gridlock in government that affects us as a nation. How has this nation drifted away from God, and what are you doing about it? Question number two, national revival can bring about national healing. Revival begins with each one of us. What steps are you taking to advance the cause for returning this nation, this community, this congregation to God? And question number three, although the symptoms are physical, the battle we face is spiritual. We read that in Ephesians 6.12. The weapon we've been issued is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. How are you using the Word of God, His inspired scriptures, in this time of war? Forgiveness is there for the asking, for us personally and for us as a nation. Jesus died for our sins. He is the key to forgiveness and healing. When sinful ways have become the way of the nation, Scripture promises curses for that nation, curses that will drive a nation to its knees, hopefully to its knees in prayer and repentance. Join the national effort to make America one nation under God once again. Join the prayers of repentance for this United States of America.